One of the most painful codes to troubleshoot on a Toyota Lexus product is a knock sensor code. You may say to yourself, well, how could a single wire knock sensor be difficult to troubleshoot? Well, the pain in Toyota Lexus not necessarily comes from the sensor itself, but comes from two other pieces. Number one, the sensor's location. On many Toyota Lexus products, the sensor is underneath both layers of intake manifolds in the valley of the engine. So we don't just pop the sensor in and see if the code goes away or see if it's going to be okay. So it is very labor intensive to get at the sensor. The other reason that it can be difficult to diagnose is because the service information unfortunately is not always detailed enough to get the sensor accurately checked or the circuit accurately checked where sometimes what we'll have is nothing more than a chart that suggests replace the component, replace the wire, replace the PCM. But what I have seen more often than not is a lack of understanding on the type of knock sensor or sensor style that Toyota Lexus went to that many manufacturers do. What we're going to cover in the short piece can be applied to many manufacturers, but it definitely applies to Toyota Lexus since they were one of the first to follow this path as far as knock sensors, which essentially changes the traditional methods for knock sensor testing. When we get a schematic, what we simply have is a single wire knock sensor with a shield, a shield to prevent RF noise from getting into the PCM. My job is to check this knock sensor as quickly as possible using the techniques that I have available since, again, the book may not be detailed enough and I certainly don't want to go omen wires out from the source to the source. So what we have traditionally done in knock sensor testing forever, no matter what the car, is we would do a knock sensor disconnect or at least at the wire connector that I can get at easily and I would put my voltmeter on the knock sensor into the center terminal of the knock sensor with my black lead on ground and I would turn my meter to AC volts because remember that knock sensors produce AC volts. And what we would do at that point is to take a long extension, a hammer, something to tap not on but near the knock sensor and when we would tap on or excuse me near the knock sensor itself what we would then look to do is have the knock sensor produce voltage. And remember, knock sensors produce AC voltage. So we would tap on the knock sensor or near the knock sensor itself, produce this AC voltage, and that would tell us that the knock sensor would work. The type of sensor that I just described, which is used on all vehicle applications, is a piezoelectric knock sensor. And the reason it's called piezoelectric is because it produces its own voltage based on vibration or noise. Everyone uses piezoelectric knock sensors. The difference is the one that most technicians are familiar with is the one that I just tested, which was called a mass piezoelectric knock sensor. And the reason it's called mass is because it picks up noise an entire range um, of frequencies, meaning that it can pick up or produce noise when we're tapping near it with an extension or obviously when the engine is pinging. I'm sure some of you have sat through a class at some point and said to yourself, well, really, I'm not sure that's the best design knock sensor that could be because when the engine gets older and the timing chain tensioner starts to rattle or we have other noises under the hood, this could artificially cause the knock sensor to have the PCM retard the timing. So what Toyota and many others have done is they have gone to what we call resonance piezoelectric knock sensors. And this is very, very important. And what it really is, in a nutshell, is this someone thinking, well, if this knock sensor is designed to retard timing when the engine's pinging, why don't I tune that knock sensor to engine ping? That way, any other noises get ignored, and I'm only going to retard the timing when I need it when the engine's pinging. Now, the reason this is important to us is simply this. If you look at the frequency of a resonance frequency knock sensor, it is somewhere between 5,000 and 9,000 hertz. In, in our case, 7,000 hertz was a very common Toyota resonance frequency knock sensor. What this means is that it is going to listen to knock noise or vibration in a range of 7,000 times per second. Obviously very difficult for me to achieve with my hammer and extension. This is where the misdiagnosis can come in because if you're diagnosing a resonance frequency knock sensor and you're tapping near the knock sensor with a hammer and extension, it never produces any output. And because it doesn't produce output, we often think, well, maybe the sensor is bad. Keep in mind, the sensor's under the intake manifold. Many technicians, unfortunately, end up putting the sensor in only to find out that the code comes back. What I want you to think about here is this. How does that change what we do with our knock sensor test? Well, since my brain is kind of small and I don't want to hold too much information up there, 
What I really need to do is figure out a simple test. I've been testing knock sensors a long time with my hammer and my extension. Well, how could I take that same approach and just apply it to any car? Because let's face it, if you get a car in tomorrow with a resonance frequency knock sensor, there is no way for you to know based on its color, shape, or size that it is tuned only to ping. So what I've done is simply added one step to my normal testing method. And that step is this. If I tap on any vehicle, Toyota Lexus in this particular example, and I get no output on my voltmeter, before I can say that knock sensor is bad, I have to say, well, maybe this is a resonance frequency knock sensor, which means it's only going to output the ping. And at that point, I simply need to adjust my testing method from the hammer and extension to making the vehicle ping. And often we make the vehicle ping by starving it for fuel, perhaps pulling out the fuel pump relay while we're power braking the car, using the mass airflow to lean the car, doing something to make the car very lean. When it's lean, it pings, and when it pings, it should produce voltage. So if you took any vehicle and you have a knock sensor code, Toyota Lexus is the greatest example. What you want to do is cause the engine to ping and see if it outputs. And if you just add that one step to your normal repertoire, what you're going to find is it's going to be a simple diagnosis. What makes this particular one difficult on many of the Toyota products is since it's under the intake manifold, I need a short jumper harness to get from the sensor out to the outside of the intake manifold. Often what happens is the wire breaks underneath. So if you're going to go in there to change the knock sensor and you're going to lift the manifolds, what you want to do is change the short jumper extension that goes between the knock sensor and the upper harness on top of the intake manifold going back to the PCM. This will ensure not only do you have the great connection underneath and the sensors replaced, but you won't have to go back in there due to a wire breaking or not. So adding one simple test should make all of your knock sensor. Understand resonance frequency knock sensors are used on many products. Toyota Lexus was just a great opportunity for get you this new testing technique.